What is the first thing that comes to mind when I mention Tim Hortons? Tim Hortons, medium with milk and double chocolate donut. All right, everyone has their favorites, right? Well, tonight we are going beyond the coffee and donuts to meet the man behind the famous chain. Thanks for coming to Tim Hortons. For many, it is a daily routine. Can I get an extra large one? Absolutely. A restaurant with its own culture and language. Medium double double and a medium black. Tim Hortons Cafe and Bake Shop. I love my Tim Hortons. Thousands drink the coffee every day, but what do you know about the man behind the name? Do you even know who this guy is? Do you know what he was and what he did? I think anybody that is 45 and younger has no idea who Tim Horton, the hockey player, is. Before the coffee and donuts, there was hockey. Timmy Horton at the blue line. Born in Cochrane, Ontario in 1930, Tim Horton rose to fame as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs in the 1950s and 60s. Henri Richard gets a ride to the boards from Horton. The 5'10 defenseman Horton helped the Leafs to four Stanley Cup championships earning superstar status along the way. Well, the guy was a walking legend. Former NHL defenseman and Buffalo Sabres broadcaster Mike Robitaille watched Horton as a kid growing up in Canada. Watch how strong and powerful he was and how he, how he understood how to play the game, the techniques of the game, and he just became my idol. An idol on the ice, Horton was also a successful businessman, creating several restaurants in Canada before opening his first donut shop in Hamilton, Ontario in 1964. Not long after, he would become a member of the Buffalo Sabres. Also on that team in 1972, a young Mike Robitaille, who was now being mentored by his childhood hero. He was the leader, quiet leader. Anytime I played with Tim Horton, it was my best hockey. It was the best hockey I ever played in my whole life. Horton made an immediate impact in Buffalo, leading the Sabres to the team's first ever playoff appearance during the 1972-1973 season, while sharing his love of business with his teammates. A few times I went in the car with him and he said, let's look for some spots uh, where it'd be a good place to put a donut shop. What a brilliant guy, you know, to think that far ahead. Uh, the only downside to Tim Horton for me was I didn't get enough time with him. We, we lost him too early. It was the early morning of February 21st, 1974, when Horton was killed in a horrific single car accident. Horton was driving back to Buffalo on the QEW when he lost control of his sports car in St. Catharines. Horton and the Sabres had played the Maple Leafs in Toronto only hours earlier. My wife told me in the morning, I think very early, and I know I punched the wall. I was actually mad at him. It's like, at this time, my life, and you mean so much to me, how could you do something like that? You know, how could you be going so fast and all that? His death is a loss to the game which he graced for over four decades. It is much more of a loss to his wife and four beautiful daughters and to the thousands of friends he made during his lifetime. Uh, we had a game the next day. And a lot of us, I know I didn't, I hardly get through the game. I couldn't stop crying. I was so upset. You walk into a dressing room, and all of a sudden you're looking at that stall, and it's empty. At the time of his death, Horton co-owned approximately 40 donut shops in Canada. The first location in the U.S. opened in western New York, 10 years later, on Niagara Falls Boulevard. As of 2014, Tim Hortons had grown to close to 4,600 restaurants, with perhaps the most unique location sitting at Harbor Center. This is the only standalone store in their entire uh, franchise that is dedicated to Tim Horton, the hockey player. The one of a kind store opened in 2014 in partnership with the Buffalo Sabres. I think you can look on the walls and see a lot of different things about Tim that you don't see any other place. You don't even see it in the arena. Um, he was a very special player, very special to our franchise. Franchise. Tim, Horton. Tim Horton was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame posthumously in 1977. His number two was retired by the Sabres in 1996 and still hangs in the rafters at Key Bank Center. Imagine, do I still think of him? How can you not think of him? If he is out of my mind in a given day or something, it soon comes back because you go by a Tim Horton store. Almost on every corner, right? We'd like to thank mm -hmm. Mike Robitaille, Mike Gilbert, the Sabres, TSN, and Tim Hortons for their help on this piece. And according to the CBC, shortly after Horton's death, his business partner actually um, took full control, purchased full control 
of the company back in 1974. Such an interesting story and wow that footage that you got from the 1970s was absolutely incredible and amazing to see the hockey players all not wearing helmets right? It, it seen was that wild time. to go into the archives and dig some of this up you know Tim Horton played for 24 seasons in the NHL just last year was recognized as still one of the 100 greatest players in NHL history believe it or not more than 40 years wow. after his <laughs> final game in the NHL.